My name is Greg Higgins, Chair of the Natural Resources Commission. I'm calling this meet, public meeting to order at 7 p.m. in accordance with the <clears throat> Commonwealth of Massachusetts Executive Order of March 12, 2020, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. We are conducting this meeting visually to ensure public access <coughs> to the deliberations of the meeting. The public may access this call through video conferencing or telephone. Following the presentation by the by a petitioner and questions of the commission, members of the public will have the opportunity to ask questions and provide public comment. If you wish to provide feedback, you'll need to raise your hand. If you are video conferencing, go to the participants tab, the bottom of the screen and click on it. Once the window is open, go to the bottom and click raise hand. The chair will call on you and you may unmute your mic. Please identify yourself by name and address. Uh, you can also raise your hand from a, your phone by dialing star nine. If you haven't already done so, please identify yourself. Everybody's done that. Thank you all. All video screens will be turned off except the commission Delia and the current petitioner. <coughs> the commission has acted on an application. Of course, the petitioner is free to leave the meeting. Screen sharing will not be permitted unless absolutely necessary. All votes will be taken by roll call. We will record this. We are recording this meeting and if you are recording, Anyone out there in the public, please let the chair know in the event that this meeting is zoomed on and we're not able to get uh, control of the meeting back all matters on the agenda that have not been heard will automatically be continued to a subsequent meeting. We don't know exactly whether it will be next week or uh, in September two. At this time, I would ask the commissioners to introduce themselves. I'll just call you all off. Lynn Huggins, just say here I do. Here. Judy. Steinbrecher. Yeah, Ed. Ed. Ed Nardi. Nick. Nick Pappas. I identified myself. Hi, Nick. Um, okay, let's move on. Uh, minutes. We've got uh, four sets. Um, I sent in a uh, comment on one of these. Does anybody, have, we're May 13th. Any thoughts, comments? No. Not hearing any. Could we have a motion? I move that we uh, approve the May 13, 2020 minutes as written. Second. Thanks, Judy. That was Lynn that, that made that motion. All those in favor, Nick? Aye. Ed? Aye. Judy? Aye. Lynn? Aye. And I'm aye as well. That's unanimous. Uh, May 20th, 2020. Anybody have any comments on that? I did have a comment that I sent to Karen. Thank you, Nick. I think I had one too. This is the one I had a comment on and I sent it to Karen. Very minor, just a word chain. Uh, seeing no comments, could we have a motion, please? I move that we approve the May 2020 uh, minutes as amended. Second. That was Lynn. Second. Uh, thanks. Uh, all those in favor, Nick? Aye. Ed? Aye. Judy? Aye. Lynn? Aye. And I'm as well. That's unanimous. Let's move on to July, uh, June 3, 2020. This one's easier to say. Do we have any comments? Seeing none, could I have a motion? I move that we approve the uh, June 3rd, 2020 minutes as written. Thanks, Lynn. Do I have a second? Second. Aye. Thanks, Nick. Um, all those in favor, Nick? Aye. Ed? Aye. Judy? Aye. Lynn? Aye. And I'm aye as well. Moving right along to the next uh, June 9th meeting. Any comments on that? I did yeah. send comments to uh, Karen on that. Yes, thank you. Nick. I sent a couple of minor comments to Karen as well. Okay. Does anybody have anything else to add? Do I have a motion? I move that we uh, approve the June 9, 2020 minutes as amended. Thank you, Lynn. Second? Second. Thanks, Ed. All those in favor, Nick? Aye. Uh, Ed? Aye. Judy? Aye. Lynn? And I'm I as well. Um, okay, we have a, a withdrawn application. We need a motion on this one, Dahlia? No motion. Just for the public record, uh, the Town of Concord, um, 90Y Plainfield Road, DEP file number 137 -1537. The application is being withdrawn without prejudice. Moving right along, we have uh, some open and continues to September 2. We have two of them. Who can make that motion for me? Uh, I'll make a motion to open and continue to September 2nd, 2020 without discussion. Uh, uh, let's see. 
uh, RDA file number 137-20-7, uh, request for determination of applicability application. And notice of intent application for the Concord Country Club, 246 Old Road to Nine Acre Corner, DEP file number 137. Don't think we have a number on that yet. We, do, we don't. Do I have a second on that? Second. Thanks, Nick. All those in favor, Nick? Aye. Ed? Aye. Judy? Aye. Lynn? Aye. And I'm aye as well. Moving to a open and continue to the September 16th meeting. Do I have a motion, please? I move that we, uh, this is Lynn, I move that we open and continue to the September 16, 2020 uh, meeting without discussion, 449 Strawberry Hill Road, DEP file number 137 to be determined. I don't have a file number. Correct, I don't either. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Judy. All those in favor, Lynn? Aye. Judy? Aye. Ed? Aye. Nick? Aye. All right, then we have to be continued to two without discussion. Um, there, uh, please, we have uh, four of them. A motion to continue to September 2nd, 2020 without discussion. Notice of a 10 application for 150 Garfield Road, DEP file 137-1524. Notice of a 10 application for 43 Old Bedford Road, DEP file 137-1504. Notice of intent application for 1134 Main Street, DEP file number 1371536, and notice of intent application uh, for 67, yeah, 676 Monument Street, DEP file 1371534, and this is Judy. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Second. Ed, second, thank you. All those in favor, Nick? Aye. Ed? Aye. Judy? Aye. Lynn? Aye. And I'm I as well. I just want to point out to anybody in there in the public that didn't understand what just happened. The Concord Country Club, which was scheduled for this evening, has been continued. And the Fenn School, which was scheduled tonight, has both been continued. So if those here that didn't understand what we just did, that's what we just did on those two issues. All right, now let's get to the business of this evening, which is a uh, Giro Land, uh, DEP file number 137-1522. And I might start it by saying that it seems as though you guys have taken our punch list and pretty much checked it out of the ballpark. So who wants to take credit for it and we can move this thing along? Um, I'll just uh, start um, uh, just by giving a brief uh, summary of what uh, has been changed since the last hearing. We had a number of comments that just for, Sorry to interrupt, Alex, just for the record, if you could introduce yourself. Oh, oh sure, I'm sorry. sorry. Thanks. Alex Patterson, ESS Group, um, consultant for the project. Um, we, uh, so there were a few, uh, uh, I'd say moderate scale changes and then a number of minor changes that were made in response to comments, both brought up both during the hearing and uh, in written comments. Um, so the, the probably the more substantial ones were the invasive species management plan has been revised, uh, actually, I'd say uh, rewritten um, to incorporate uh, comments received on the original plan. Um, so that was submitted. Um, the town has prepared a draft land management plan for the project, um, which I think we discussed on the last hearing. Uh, you know, this is sort of a proposal for what the ultimate land management plan for the park would be, um, which would need to be approved by the select board. Um, and then the third uh, uh, more substantial change, I guess, is uh, the plans have been revised to include the locations of trees uh, along with size and species um, along the paths that are proposed for removal. Um, and then there were a number of relatively minor changes to other documents the waiver requests, um, the project narrative, and um, a few of the other plan sheets. Uh, right, right. But those are the big things. No, thank you. I think that that did summarize it. And we do have the waivers and those are great. Uh, I appreciate you guys 
uh, taking the effort to put the trees on there. It was helpful and it and it's, uh, follows our not normal procedure. So I think that's wonderful. Um, is there anything else in your pr uh, proposal? Uh, is there anything else you want to say before we open this discussion among the commissioners? That was it for me. I, I'm not um, asking you to boycott. I'm not asking. <laughs> That was all I had. I don't know, Bob. All right. or if well, anyone. I think I think my my point is, you know, your letter pretty much had the checklist of what was asked of you, and I went through it, and I pretty much checked it all off. And I think the one thing that staff noticed, and I think it's a, a minor detail, and that is the fence that you're that we're having put to protect the the pond uh, on that open field part. Um, we don't want that to be at ground level. We'd like that to be up maybe like six inches. That's a detail change, and uh, that would that would sort of maybe end all the points that one would have to put, you know, change on the plan. We, we yeah. want we want smaller animals to be able to go, you know, to and from. Right. Yeah. No, that that seems perfectly reasonable to me. So. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's that's what staff and I have discussed as yeah. something that would finalize this from our standpoint. Is do any of the other commissioners have any thoughts or comments here? I appreciate the invasive species management plan, especially yeah. that large part that I'll, that'll really help the pond. Yeah. So I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. We do apologize on the invasive species. We were sure there was some knotweed down in there, but um, crawling down and crawling down in there on one of the 95 degree days, sloshing along the shore, we found none. So it, in the end, it's good news that yes. there is none. So that we're is good news. About, we're glad about That's right. that. Well, you're a big man to admit your mistake there, huh? All you do is bring a little wind. You could have said it was there, you know? I thought I saw some feathers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, any other comments from the commissioners? Not hearing any. Uh, is there anything that the public would like to? And we'll just wait a second. I think most of these people are representatives of this project, so I don't. What, just while I'm waiting, just for the commissioners, what I would like to do is, uh, now that they know that they will change that plan a tad bit, raising the fence, I'd like to close, close the hearing tonight, but we're not able to vote because we don't have um, the order of conditions all prepared, which will take us to the next meeting. But if we close it, I think that gives everybody the idea that that it's a it's we're, it's just formality, and you guys wouldn't even need to come into next meeting. So, Greg, I apologize. I know we talked about that um, this morning, um, and I, I thought that was a great idea. However, since we do need that revised sheet thirty six that shows the fence detail, oh, we have okay. to close it because then once it's closed, we can't accept any additional materials. So, uh, hopefully, so we just did, knowing we that the yeah, we did find knotweed in our proposal, so I guess we'll have to continue. But not seeing anything from the public, I think uh, we should just continue this. Sorry, but I think we're all done here uh, until the September 2 meeting, at which point I'm sure we will issue an order of condition. And there wouldn't be any need for anybody on the project team to attend that meeting. It's really just a formality where the commission will draft up an order of conditions. Uh, then the commission would just vote on that. So there's a need for you to spend another night with us. Does that make sense to you folks? So do we make a motion here to continue this to uh, the two, second? Who wants to give me that motion, please? Uh, I make a motion that we continue this hearing uh, for file 1371522 for 369 38A 48 Commonwealth Avenue to September 2nd, 2020. Second. Thank you, Ed. That was Judy making the motion. All those in favor, Nick? I didn't hear you, Nick, but I, I saw your lips move. Um, Ed? Aye. Judy? Aye. Lynn? Aye. And I'm aye as well. Thank you, guys. Great. Thank you for working that out with us. <clears throat> we, we got there, and I think we're all happy. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Uh, moving right along, DEP file number 1371535, 141 uh, Comerford Road. Who is here this evening uh, to chat on that? 
Good evening, John James Opolis. Hi, John. Hello. It seems like we've we've moved this one along a long way too. So, uh, do you have anything briefly to add to what you've submitted, or just cover what you've the changes that you've submitted? Thank you. Yeah, no, I think um, our intent was always to uh, approximate what was on the detailed report and under the, you know, some nice conversations with uh, Delia. I appreciate that input to um, put the specificity down that I think the commission required. And um, that was very helpful to get that insight. So we've uh, made everything much more explicit, broken the mitigation plan into four distinct areas because of the different needs. And we've made um, the um, uh, much more contiguous to the wetlands uh, where we could. And um, that's basically the gist of these revisions. Questions from the commissioners? I really, I, I think we're there. It seems, um, it seems that you've done, we've worked it out, I think, as you say, it took a little bit of understanding on both parts of what, what we were trying to attain here, and it looks like we've done that. So um, do I hear no commissioner questions? I'm going to open it to the public. Anybody out there in the Wild West? Um, we'll wait a second. Um, just in case. I would just note that um, we did request, we, and um, John, you're going to provide a a revised plan, uh, just the, with the the preparer's name and date. Yes, I I did email that to you this afternoon. It, it, you didn't oh. receive it. Nope. I did not. If you could resend that, that would be great. I will do yeah. that. Okay. All right, I don't see any public comment, so I think we should continue this a second. And once again, John, you're more than welcome to show up, but it would be our intentions to probably issue uh, at, on that day. Um, do I have a motion to continue to the 2nd of September, please? Sure, I'll make it continue uh, DEP file number 1371534. Oops, sorry, wrong one. <laughs> DEP. 1535. 1535, there we go. Uh, 141 Comerford Road to September 2nd. Do I have a, that was next. Do I have a second? Second. Thanks, Ed. All those in favor, Judy? Aye. Nick? Aye. Lynn? Aye. Ed? Aye. And I'm aye as well. Thank you very much, John. I appreciate your efforts on this and working with us. I think it came out nicely. Thank you very much. I agree. Thank you for your help. Uh, moving right along, we're going to a one revolutionary road, um, DEP, an RDA 20-8. Uh, who is representing folks on this? That would be me. This is Eve Eisenberg from Inkstone Hi. Architects on Main Street. Hi, Delia. Hi, everybody. Hi. So we want to tear down a, 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 a garage and put one up closer to the house. Well, it actually put one up attached to the house um, yes, right now. That's, that's a lot closer, yeah. Yeah, a lot closer. Uh, none, the existing structure is super close. It's kissing the 100-foot buffer line, but the new structure is pulled back an extra six feet away from it all. Um, but the reason that we're here is because, uh, as you can see from the, um, from the survey from Stansky, uh, during construction, we want to put in some, um, some barrier barriers for runoff and that's uh within the zone there's a yeah oh that's sideways i'm sorry but and that's okay i can i can i can that's okay there's a little oh. picture at the bottom of the of that of the screen off to the right of the drawing yeah that <clears throat> shows the the hay bale barriers that would prevent silt from running down into the proposed the, the wetland for the proposed yeah. construction period yeah, so there's the existing garage right there in front of you, and you can see the outline of the new garage pulled back away from the zone. And we have, my plan is so small, I couldn't read the numbers, but it looks as though on the plan <coughs> that they have, and if they have it, we should just get it done, that you, you show the current distance to the wetland and the 
future distance, the closest points, just so that it, it on the plan it's obvious that it's further away. I mean, I, it's obvious. Yeah, I apologize for giving you such a time. Usually time. ask the engineer to put that on the plan, to just to verify um, visually that the plan is complete. We know exactly why, so we know we don't let things get closer. If you if you could do that, I appreciate it. We'll do. Um, other than that, I don't really think this is as much. I, I'm I'm done with it. Uh, any other commissioners have comments? No. Seems to me we might want to move this one right to the final page. Does anybody want to make a determination on this, please? Go ahead, Lynn, please. Uh, I move that we uh, issue a negative determination of number three uh, for RDA file number 20-8 uh, with uh, two conditions. Uh, one, disturbed area shall be loamed and seeded following construction. And two, after the project has been completed, the applicant shall submit a letter to the NRC stating that all work has been conducted in accordance with the conditions of this determination of applicability and that any changes from the RDA shall be described. Thank you. Thank you. That was Lynn making the motion, Ed seconding. Uh, all those in favor? So, so Greg, I'm sorry, before you, um, the commission, did you want additional numbers to be provided? prior to the determination being issued? Yes, I, I just wanted the, the current distance to the current garage at its closest point and the, the future closest point put on that. And that probably should be in the motion. Is that what you're suggesting? Yeah. So, so would you amend? Yeah, so amend and then that motion that, um, what, uh, uh, an, addition, an amendment to the plan will be filed. Um, Yes, no, Delia's looking unsure. It's in We're, the uh, narrative, but not on the plan. It's in the narrative. Right. I agree, I agree. agree. We want it on the plan. We, we like to get everything on the plan as well, Eve, because so, plans are what people always look at um, and almost never go in the file and read everything. That's so you'll problem. be submitting a revised plan, including that, that includes Can you just, as agreed to, you could say, Lynn. Yeah, as agreed to. Do I have a second now? Second. Uh, all those in favor of the motion as amended, Nick? Aye. Ed? Aye. Judy? Aye. Lynn? Aye. And I'm I as well. Thank you very much, Eve. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you for your time, everybody. You're, you're, you're welcome. Okay, what else have we got to do tonight? We've got a bunch of administrative kinds of things. The town has requested an extension on 20A Lowell Road to EP file number 137-1313 for three years. I guess staff thinks that's okay. Yes, uh, so that is for the old calf pasture invasive species right. uh, in the area of Britain's right. violet habitat. Right. We're working with Native Plant Trust on that and we would really like to continue that good work that's been going on since um, 2010. Uh, making significant progress there, so um, hopeful that uh, we can continue that progress. Do I, any discussion amongst the commissioners, seeing none, any discussions among the public? Uh, there is no public here, so let's just move right along. Can I have a motion, please? Make a motion to extend for three years, uh, the EP file 137.13.13 for 28 Lower Road. Second. Thanks, Ed. That was Judy making the motion. All those in favor, Nick? Aye. Ed? Aye. Judy? Aye. Lynn? Aye. And I'm I as well. Now we need uh, COCs, two COCs. Uh, everything's fine. Delia's shaking her head. So can we get yeah, all set. a motion on DEP file number 1371476? Let's do them one at a time, in fairness. So uh, I'll make a motion that we issue a certificate of compliance for 1709 Monument Street, DEP file number 1371476. Second. Thank you, Ed. Uh, all those in favor, Nick? Aye. Lynn? Aye. Judy? Aye. Ed? Aye. And I'm I as well. Uh, next one, 147 Minot Road, 137-1231. Do I have a motion? 
I move that we issue a certificate of compliance for DEP file number 1371231. Second. Ed seconded. That was Lynn with the motion. Judy, how say Aye. you? Aye. Ed? Aye. Nick? Aye. Lynn? Aye. And I'm I as well. Okay, now we go to other business. We have somebody that's, we have the town has an opportunity to exercise a PNS should they want to. I hope everybody read the letter. Um, any thoughts or comments by anybody? No. It doesn't seem like something that. It's kind of an orphan piece of land there. It doesn't. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't seem to have, you know, high value or a value that we would want to conserve it. Right. I kind of agree. It's out on, it's pretty, out, pretty far out on the fringes in terms of other, well, other it's town not tied, space. Yeah. It's not yeah. tied into anything, anything mm -hmm. we can link it with. I mean, it's tied into the golf course, but I don't really think we want to give the golf, buy a piece of land for this kind of money to give the golf course, you know, a better vista. That doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, so maybe we just, uh, do we need a vote on this? You do, do. So you need to make a recommendation to the select board on whether or not they should exercise their right of first refusal. Do I have a recommendation that somebody could throw out here that probably would be that we don't buy this? Make a recommendation that, uh, I, I'd make a motion that we recommend to the select board pursuant of MGL chapter 61B, the notice of intent to sell and convert use from recreational to residential for Nishati Country Club, uh, 1844 Sudbury Road, parcel number 3431, that we recommend that they uh, do not uh, exercise that right of first refusal. Thank you, Judy. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Nick. Um, all those in favor? I, anybody out there in the public have any thoughts on this? No, this is great. This is Nick? Nick? Where is uh, how say you? Aye. Uh, Ed? Aye. Judy? Aye. Lynn? Aye. And I am I as well. Thank you, guys. Uh, moving right along, there's an administrative approval on 70 Elm Street for vegetation removal and replanting. Yes. Uh, what are we talking about? So this is all, um, I'm just sure. Can you see this? It's not a very uh, big yes, I can. Yeah, I can see scenario it. with yeah. the floodplain in the hatch, the 100 foot buffer zone here. This is 70 Elm Street. Sorry, this is 70 Elm Street here. Yeah. Um, and the 200 foot riverfront area comes in front of the parcel here. So they're looking to basically take out some arborvitae in the front. So all this work is in the outer riverfront. It's, it's taking out some existing vegetation that the, the seller of the property is looking to just amp up a little bit with more native species because it involves some vegetation removal and is not entirely native replacements. I thought it was worth to you is just an administrative approval but Colleen and I have looked at this and don't have any issues with any of the plants that are being proposed nor any of the removals that are coming out and would just recommend that this proceed under an administrative approval. Is this a project we this project we dealt with before? This is Correct. a project that there is an open order of conditions. Yep. This portion of, it was actually, there was a lot of work done on the house. There was some driveway work that was done. And there is outstanding work in terms of the driveway was extended without your approval. Mm -hmm. then it back into compliance. And the seller is aware of that, that before a certificate of compliance can be issued on this, that that has to be resolved. Okay. Well, I, I would say it a different way. I appreciate them coming to us before they do stuff. Uh, that's, that's always helpful. <laughs> Can we get a motion on this? You don't really. I mean, I bring these to you because um, right. it's, it's, no, I think it's certification good. and public notice. Um, so there's, there is not a need for you to make a motion on it. Okay. Well, then, I, I don't have an issue with it. If anyone else does, please speak or forever hold your peace on this one. Uh, so I would just point out that um, uh, a member of the public has just joined the meeting um, who may be interested in this proposal. So Lucy, uh -huh. hi, good evening. So we just talked about the 
70 Elm Street. Is this what you were on the call for? Sorry, did I say Judy? I meant Lucy. No, you said Lucy. Okay. Lucy. Hello, Lucy. You are muted, Lucy. If you would unmute yourself, we'd appreciate it if you want to talk. If she has as much problem with her computer as I with mine, we'll give her a few minutes here to. Lucy, maybe in the lower left-hand corner, it's an unmute button. No. Oops, here she is. There you go. Ah, there we go. Did, were you interested in commenting on this 70 Elm Street? I'm an observer tonight. Um, there okay. are several things that are interesting to me, so I just like to be a listener and a watcher. Excellent. Well, thank you. Welcome aboard. Thank you so much, Greg. We're at the end of the meeting, so you're, you're, you're the final speaker. You got the last thing. Oh, it's all over? It's all over. I miss. So when do we find out what the committee decided? Because the minutes are posted you know, months later, so I can never um, find out exactly what happened at any of these meetings. Well, I think staff would be most willing if you emailed or called them to, to give you whatever information you needed. Was there something that you were interested in tonight that uh, we, we'd be more than happy to tell you what happened this evening if there's an issue that you were wondering what we did? Well, I was interested in the Fen School doc situation and I that was, also was That was postponed. Okay, and in the hundred trees coming down on Strawberry Hill Road, that was a real post also postponed. That was also postponed. Both of the things you were coming in on right at the beginning of the meeting, we we uh, we continue those by request of the petitioners, and and so they'll be in future meetings. Uh, Delia will let you know, but I th one of them did they both go to the second? Uh, one went to the second, and one went to the sixteenth. The Strawberry Hill went to the sixteenth. Correct. And the Fenn School went to the second. Okay. And we have another I, member of the public who is just joining the meeting, Greg. Just yeah, I, I see. Okay. So I'm always interested in decisions of not just the NRC, but many other committees in town. And of course, the minutes are not posted for months. So we never really know what happened. And that's, you know, as a concerned citizen, and since we can't attend in person, I just like to know. Is a follow-up what happens yeah well, the beauty is that we could do it by zoom now so if you're free on wednesday evenings i'll be there meeting be there. At seven <laughs> um and and the public is always welcome to participate in the conversation well i'm always happy to see delia in person so i will say she's oh amazing. likewise lucy thank so you giving a big shout out to delia <laughs> <laughs> thank you lucy uh, ingrid Detwaller, I see, see you are on here. Did you come to speak to the commissioners on anything? Nothing in particular. I just wanted to observe, but I would echo the problem, the ongoing continuing problem of minutes of meetings not being posted in a timely manner. And I don't know if pushback from committee chairs would help or not. Well, I, I, I Delia and I have talked about this on several occasions, and I, uh, it, this is not an excuse, it's an actual reason. Um, and I think town meeting would be, need to be involved in this in terms of staffing and paying for the staff to, to write up all these meetings. We have meetings every other week, and we have one person um, who has a bunch of other functions and then has to get the minutes out. We're, we're currently up to June 9th, which I think we'd all agree is not really a satisfactory position to be in, but I, I can only say we're doing better, mm -hmm. but it's still not satisfactory. I, I will tell but, you. And, and I would just add to that. Thank you, Greg. I would just add to that, Ingrid, that we are doing the best that we can. We are, um, we, I ran the numbers from March 15th through June 30th of last year to March 15th of June 30th of uh, sorry, July 30th of this year, we're 30% busier. I'm sure. Than we were last year. 
So we're, we are really honestly, I mean, we, we don't intentionally, you know, hold these minutes back. We want to get them out as quickly as we can. Um, we have, there's just a lot on our plates. So let me ask, you know, we haven't talked about this on, in, considering this is recorded in Zoom, does the public have access to the Zoom? Mm -hmm. So all of the meeting minutes, I mean, all of the right. meeting recordings are on the Minuteman, um, MMN, Minuteman Media Network. And then if, if you click on that, and it brings you to a town web page, and then you go to the left on YouTube recordings. It's a, I think it's a little cumbersome to find it, but you just go to the, the YouTube recordings and then all of the committee meetings are separated alphabetically. So A through F and G through whatever it is. There's four sets. You can find all of the Natural Resources Commission meetings up through our last one, which was July 22nd. We'll send this to them tomorrow and it will get posted within a few days. So, so there is that option to view the entire meeting visually at a time that's sort of convenient for you to do so. What, what I would, could, would it be advisable to take our, our home, home page and just put that link on it so that people, you, you know, if you're, you know, if you see that the minutes you're looking for are not posted yet, you're more than welcome to do X, Y, and Z and watch it on Zoom. I think that is, you know, helps a bit. I think that would be helpful for all the committees. Um, there are other committees I've been interested in what's happened. And, you know, it's really difficult to find out. But the, on the other hand, I'm on one of the town committees and I was totally shocked uh, to see our meeting on Facebook, on YouTube, and, and you know, and we were, we had a wonderful meeting, but it was a surprise. So we talked about it at our last meeting that, hey, this is on YouTube and it's available to everybody worldwide. And so, you know, you gotta... uh, we're very responsible and it's just a good thing for committees to realize that it's available at a for a wide, wide audience. Yes. And you ought to call your agent though to see if you can get, you know, monies for that, you know? Yes, exactly. What are they call residuals, you know? <laughs> right. Anyways, I know my company records all of our meetings and anybody who misses it can go in and watch. And that's why I asked, that might be, at least gives you a chance if you're really interested to, to, to catch up. Yeah. And Lucia, I would, I would recommend that if you think it's important for all committee, um, recordings to be on, you know, something other than just the Minuteman Media Network, if it's, if you, it's important that they're on each of the individual web pages, I would suggest that you send an email to the town manager or the deputy town manager with that request. Oh, um, good. I think I will, because the current journal doesn't cover meetings very well that have already occurred unless there's um, controversy. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. We all know that. Well, thank you for joining us, Ingrid. Thank you for joining us, Lucy. Um, uh, I, Frank, I, have a, I have a question. Please. Um, Delia, any insight as to when we might start meeting in person again? Oh boy, Judy, that's a, that's a, that, um, I don't think it's going to be for a while. I, I really okay. don't. All right. I, mean, I was just curious. Yeah, so our, our municipal buildings aren't even open to the public right now. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And I think we're just in this for a little bit, quite a little bit longer. I, I don't okay. know when the end is in sight, but I mm -hmm. think we're in this for the foreseeable future. Okay, that's, what, that's all I was looking for, thank you. I mean, considering the town meeting is being held outdoor at the White Field, uh, we'd have to separate all of us by six feet plus get all the public, which we never know how many. I don't know what we would do for, I don't know if we own any facilities that mm -hmm. we could adhere to the current rules. That's true, yeah. I don't know, maybe the high school gymnasium and, you know, I don't know. It, it, it's, it's impractical. I, I find them, I do kind of miss the personal uh, meeting you guys and chit-chatting about things after the meeting and, you know, about what everybody's doing, but, uh, other than that, these seem to be modestly efficient ways of doing it, too. So there's a plus. Yeah. And you and don't have to say be in Concord, too. <laughs> we, we, <yeah. laughs> you know where I am, do you? 
Uh, I'm just speaking for myself, Greg. Okay. <laughs> no harm, no foul. All right. Well, anyways, uh, do we need a motion to adjourn? Because uh, I move to adjourn. Second. I, I see Ed second, and all those in favor, of course, are everyone, and I'm not even going to poll you. Uh, have a good evening, guys. Thanks so much. See you on the second, if not earlier. Thanks, Thanks Greg. Thank you. Thanks, Delia. Bye-bye.